Hi, welcome to the Everdual Force unboxing and cleaning review. Uh, I created this video really because I found a lack of resource when I was searching for this barbecue. So hopefully you'll find this useful. To start with opening the box, um, it was really well packaged, but it was an enormous box. Um, so when you actually start opening up, one thing I did notice was uh, a considerable amount of, albeit well packaged, but there was a lot of polystyrene, which I do find in today's age that I think we could find a bit more environmentally friendly. And I also noticed that all of the, the little white bits get everywhere. Um, but as I said, it was very well packaged um, for transit. Now, once you start getting into it, the uh, once you start removing the packaging, the you'll notice that one of the legs is actually in the on the polystyrene. So once you remove that, uh, you'll actually find that the 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 barbecue becomes sort of more visible. But it can be challenging to get it out, so I would highly recommend that you do a two man lift. So once you've actually got the barbecue out of the box, um, you can see it comes with a partially on its base and there's several boxes inside the actual lid. Um, in the smaller box, you'll find that there's a all the tools, all the, the nuts and bolts, and also one of these trays. The grill itself um, is really well packaged in bubble wrap. And then once you remove that underneath, you'll actually see that the, the burners are there. Now, um, also in a larger box that comes uh, the, the three legs, um, put those to one side. So to start with, what we need to do is the first instruction is putting the, the, the handle on. Um, that comes with all the screws assembled, which I found really useful um, and actually very straightforward to actually attach to, to the lid. Um, just takes a couple of minutes. Next stage is removing the actual barbecue from the first base. So you've got four screws um, all marked with an arrow. So remove those screws front and back. Um, and then once that's um, done, the actual main barbecue unit will actually lift off quite easily. Now, one of the main reasons I chose the force over perhaps a Weber or Weber, however you say it, um, was the fact that you could actually use this as a portable barbecue. Now, it's not really advertised and it's not shown, but I am uh, just got into caravanning with my wife and family, and we were looking at perhaps a, a, a portable barbecue to, to, to replace our, our aging Kadak. Um, and one thing I found, even though it is quite heavy, this actually is a really quite good unit. Now, I see a lot of caravanners with uh, like the Q-series portable barbecues, um, and I thought I'll kill two birds with one stone with this. Um, and as you can see, it's actually a really good size. Um, it's not too heavy. We'll fit in the back of the car or even on the, the floor of the caravan while towing. Wouldn't recommend it for camping. I think it's a bit bulky for that. Um, but it's a good looking unit and it's freestanding. And the heat that's generated underneath will not affect the table at all. So the next part of the assembly process is actually doing the base. So you need to take the, the base that you remove the barbecue from, turn it upside down. There's no front and back. Locate the legs. They're all labeled with left front, left back, right, etc. cetera. Um, so relatively straightforward to, to do. Um, once you've got all the legs in place, just fit at the screws that come with it loosely. Don't do them all the way up because you need some flexibility because you'll need to put the, the support crossbars in um, at, during this process. So you just need that little bit of flexibility. Um, the installation of the crossbars are straightforward. Um, what you will look at doing really is just aligning and making sure that there's the, the screw holes are, are lined up to put the screws in easy. Um, just a little bit of a fiddle, um, but the fit is very good. And again, nice and simple once you've got everything into place. Once the supports are in place, um, go and get the screws and basically just fit them. Um, it might take a little bit of manipulation on that to make sure that the screws are centered, um, but really straightforward. Um, get the screws nice and tight and then go along and then tighten up the base screws so that you've got a good solid structure for the next part. At this stage, you'll then be attaching the chain to the legs. That just supports the gas bottle. Once the chain's on, flip the base over onto its legs so then you can start fitting the shelf. Again, very straightforward, just feed it through the gap in the legs and then there's four screws located on the base. Next step is to add the gas bottle hook. Again, really straightforward, just slips into the hole and then you just lock it, like lock it in place with the, uh, there's a bolt 
and a nut. So you will require a small spanner to, to help you there. Um, I just use my fingers, but a spanner is much easier. Once you've done that, get the base onto the ground and then you can put the barbecue unit back onto it. Make sure it's located in the right way and then do the reverse of what you did earlier and go round to each one of the four locations and then screw those bolts back in. Next stage is to add the shelf. I um, highly recommend that you actually put it into place and then there's some springs and some bolts that just go on. Final step is to add the thermostat. Again, really straightforward. Just um, unbox it, find the locate the screws at the holes and then just screw it in place. Um, just make sure it's nice and tight and then um, and then you're pretty much done in making the barbecue. Um, next step really is just to put the, the grills back into place. Um, this can be a little bit fiddly. Um, the, it doesn't fit exact, so you must have to little play around. Um, but once you've got them in and you can see that everything's covering the burners, you're good to go. Attach the gas bottle using the pre-installed regulator and you're ready. The barbecue heats up really quickly within 10 minutes. Um, so I'm a bit of a gas convert now after being a, a charcoal only guy for, for most of my life. Um, once you've actually got everything um, up to, to heat, it cooks steaks fantastic and you can really regulate all of the other food that you're cooking. So far, super impressed and would highly recommend this as a, a, a good alternative to a Weber. I just really want to now cover off the cleaning again. It was a big concern of mine of how I'd maintain this. The grills do get dirty, um, as all barbecues do. Uh, basically, I whack the heat up so it chars it off a little bit. I put the grills separately into a, some hot soapy water to soak and then just clean that with a brush. From the inside point of view, I stick a bucket directly under the, the hole in the center and just go around with some hot soapy water and a non-scratch sponge. Um, just going around making sure everything's nice and clean and I push the the dirt and the grime down the hole into the bucket. For those stubborn stains, I'll use a, a, a dishwashing brush. Again, nothing non-scratch and just go around making sure everything's nice and, and, and clean. There is plenty of space underneath the gas burners to put your hand and, and the brush. So that's quite good. So there's nothing really too fiddly. Um, and once it, it's nice and clean, I just rinse it off really with a little bit more fresh water. Um, I go around the outside of the barbecue with the sponge, just keep catching up all of the, the, the drips and splashes. Um, you'll see that the lid does discolor, but that doesn't scrub off. But again, it's the lid, it will. And then once you've got all the, 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 the cleaning done, literally just go over it with a tea towel or a non-link cloth, whichever you prefer. Um, again, just making sure that everything around the outside is, is nice and clean for storage. So all I can say, it's a great barbecue. Um, really impressed with it. Um, and maybe we'll be doing a, another review video once we've taken this on our first caravan and trip in the summer. Um, thank you very much for watching and I look forward to looking at your comments or if you've got any questions, please reach out.